Hello, today is Friday, August 21st, 2020. I'm Joe Schmidt from TC2, and this is Staying Connected. In late April of this year, the FCC adopted sweeping new rules that will allow, potentially, hundreds of millions of new Wi-Fi access points and other unlicensed devices to transmit on the same 6 gigahertz frequencies that are currently used by public safety agencies, energy companies, telecom carriers, and many other licensees for point-to-point communications. This is really a big deal. Think about it. What would happen if those hundreds of millions of unlicensed devices somehow cause interference on the airwaves? Fortunately for you, I'm joined today by Jeff Sheldon, a partner at LB3 and someone who is intimately familiar with these new FCC rules. So, Jeff, please tell me that I'm not overthinking this and that there's no need to worry. No, Joe, you're you're not overthinking it, and I share your concerns about it. The FCC's rules are premised on a lot of assumptions. For example, the FCC is optimistic that an untested automatic frequency coordination system, or AFC as they call it, can prevent standard power Wi-Fi devices. And these would be a little bit higher type Wi-Fi devices that might be used outdoors for commercial type operation, that the AFC system can prevent these standard power devices from operating on the same channel as a nearby microwave system, untested. They also assume that all consumers will obey warning labels on lower power devices called low power indoor devices, access points that consumers could use in their homes or businesses, that consumers will obey these warning labels that they're not allowed to take them outside and they're not allowed to use them in a moving vehicle or that a consumer would not dare put one of these devices near a window that would happen to be facing towards a microwave receiver. So it's based on all of these assumptions, untested, based on computer simulations. And the FCC believes that these conditions will keep the potential for interference to a manageable level. (laughs) What, What does that mean, keep it to a manageable level? Yeah, the FCC hasn't said what it believes is manageable because there's no way for microwave licensees to manage interference from these devices. The tech companies, the big companies that you all know and love providing consumer tech products, are projecting consumer demand for nearly 1 billion of these devices in a band that's already used by about 100,000 licensed microwave paths. So even if there's a low statistical probability of interference, it could still translate into a large number of actual interference cases. So for example, even if you say the probability of interference is less than one-tenth of one percent, sounds very low. But does that mean at any given time, one million devices could be causing interference? Or that a hundred microwave paths could be subject to interference? Or that any given path could get 45 minutes of interference a month? What does low statistical probability really mean when you translate it into the real world? So if interference happens, like I think you're predicting, how does it get resolved and how quickly will it happen? Unfortunately, the FCC has provided no mechanism for licensees to identify, report, or promptly terminate the interference. The result could be disruption of critical communications. I mean, remember, these paths are used by public safety agencies, state and local government, electric and gas utilities, and it's only going to get worse as more unlicensed devices flood the market and as the FCC's resources to track and terminate interference are spread thin. It can take the FCC months to investigate interference and take action. For example, the Federal Aviation Administration operates radars in a band near this, and the FCC opened up that band to unlicensed devices a number of years ago. It can take the FCC five months to investigate and terminate operations on FAA radar frequency. Think how motivated the FCC would be to expend resources to track down a consumer's Wi-Fi access point. Yeah, well, that's not good. Is anyone challenging this FCC ruling? Yes, it's being challenged on two fronts. A couple of organizations have asked the FCC to reconsider the rules. For example, the FCC based part of its decision on the assumption that a typical consumer Wi-Fi access point has an average duty cycle of 0.4%. 
meaning Wi-Fi routers do not transmit continuously and are therefore unlikely to cause interference. But that assumption was based on a flawed study. It wasn't fully introduced into the record, and it was only based on one type of access point from an unnamed manufacturer in the five gigahertz band for residential use. So they're basing a lot of assumptions on one study and average consumer use of a five gigahertz Wi-Fi device. So one party has asked for reconsideration that the FCC ought to specifically limit the duty cycle of devices in this band to 0.4% in line with the studies on which the FCC relied to build its rules. So the FCC admits it doesn't know exactly what these devices will be used for, and it seems only right that the technical assumptions used in the interference analysis should be codified in the rules. So who else is challenging the FCC? Several parties have appealed the decision to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit. These petitioners include representatives of the public safety community, electric and gas utilities, and telecom carriers, all of which have critical microwave paths operating in the band. The cases have not been fully briefed yet, but some of the petitioners have pointed to the FCC's unjustified reliance on computer simulations to support its opinion that interference is unlikely, and the lack of any real-world testing to validate the assumptions underlying the FCC's theoretical analyses. So, Jeff, when do these new rules go into effect? They actually went into effect the end of July, and a couple parties asked the FCC to stay the new rules until the appeals are resolved, but not surprisingly, the FCC denied the request for stay. And the FCC's decision denying the stay had a lot of inconsistent statements in it, such as saying, on the one hand, the FCC wants to help get these new devices to market as soon as possible because there's tremendous pent-up consumer demand for new Wi-Fi channels while also speculating that there won't be any interference while the appeals are pending because consumers will probably not buy very many of these devices even once they come to market. Okay. What if a company is concerned, like I am, about this? What should they do? Well, the FCC has said it's very possible we could see these devices in the market by the holiday buying season at the end of this year. So, we're recommending to licensees of six gigahertz microwave systems that they should do some benchmarking of their current system performance before these new devices are allowed to pollute the band and make sure they have the engineering and analytical tools to monitor for potential interference and compare the environment, you know, a year from now versus what their systems are doing today. Okay, thanks, Jeff. This has been really informative. Now, If you want more information on the FCC's decision to allow uncontrolled low-power devices in the 6 gigahertz band, Jeff wrote a couple of articles that are available on our websites at LB3 and TC2, so please check those out. You can also contact Jeff directly by sending him an email or giving him a call. In addition, you can contact any of the LB3 and TC2 professionals that you work with to discuss this or any of your ICT lifecycle needs. And as always, you can stay current by subscribing to our Staying Connected podcast, by checking out our websites, or by following us on LinkedIn.